This is the Radeon 6990 and this right here is what it's all about. So I'm going to actually spoil the surprise a little bit on this one. Okay, I'm just going to put that there so you don't forget what we're talking about here. I'm going to spoil the surprise and I'm going to show you guys this. Average FPS of 59 frames per second. Now, what resolution is that running at, Linus, you might ask me? And I would tell you, thank you for asking such an enlightened question. The resolution we are running at is 5 times 1080p. That's right, we're running at 5x full HD resolution with 5 monitors here running in iFinity mode portrait style so because I mean let's face it widescreen monitors they're already wide so if you took five widescreen monitors they'd be behind you and you'd have to look out the back of your head in order to experience the game so this is a way that we can push more resolution without making it too too wide and run more monitors in infinity mode for a much larger picture and a totally immersive gaming experience so I'm gonna stand or I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here just for scale, okay, of what you would look like in front of this monitor. So my field of vision goes out to about here. I stopped being able to see my hands. So almost my entire peripheral vision is taken up by the image in front of me, and it is pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit more about the 6990 and how it fits into the marketplace and also that spiffy looking system right there which features the Radeon 6990. So first let's talk about the 6990 a little bit. The 6990 is a pretty darn cool card. Actually I'm not holding a 6990. Why don't I hold the 6990 first? So this is a dual GPU card that has dual Radeon HD 6970s, although not quite, okay? So by default, they're actually downclocked a little bit, but there's a switch on the top of the card that you, if you flip the switch, if you have the power supply and the motherboard and the overall system stability to handle it, you can run this card at full dual Radeon HD 6970 clock speed. So essentially this is two cards into one. You can see right here there's two backplates on the back of the card, each of those for a dedicated GPU. This guy has four gigs of graphics memory. Yes, four gigabytes of graphics memory. Each GPU with a dedicated two gigs of memory. You need that kind of memory in order to run at huge resolutions like this because you have to load so much into the video memory that Okay, get, look, you get the point. You need it, okay? So up here, we've got dual 8-pin power connectors because you need a lot of power to power a bunch of memory, to power two GPUs, do all that good stuff. And here at the back of the card, this is where a lot of the magic happens because we've got a single DVI output. We're used to seeing those on video cards. We've had those for a while. And then we have four mini display port outputs. So what that means is that this card is capable of outputting up to five displays alone. Now that's not the most displays we've ever seen out of an AMD graphics card. That title is still held by the, uh, the 5870 Ifinity 6 edition, which I have one here. So I just want to show you guys for contrast the difference between the IO shields of these two particular cards. But the difference is that the 5870 Ifinity 6 edition didn't really have the horses to power modern DirectX 11 games at this kind of a crazy resolution. So that's where the 6990 really pulls away from the competition. On the NVIDIA side, they do have some of their own unique technologies like 3D Vision, 3D Vision Surround. However, they do not have the ability to run a single game at a single resolution, treating it like a single display on five displays simultaneously in portrait mode like the 6990 is able to do. Now this is the Vesta R1. This is the system that we produced at NCIX specifically to house this video card. So we actually took a Corsair Obsidian 650D, did a custom paint job on it. So we painted a lot of it glossy red, uh, Radeon red to match the card that we were gonna put in there. And these were a limited production run. We only produced five of these systems. However, 
I just, then they're all sold, so yeah, sorry guys. They're all sold, um, but this is serial number one, the one that we're going to ship to one of the lucky customers who got one of these systems before they were gone. They actually sold out in a matter of uh, four hours. They were gone, that was it. So this is an example of the kind of system that you need in order to avoid any bottlenecking and to get the most out of a 6990. So we have a liquid-cooled Intel Core i7 2600K processor. It's clocked at 4.4 gigahertz. Each one of these pre-overclocked machines is going to come at that clock speed, but basically with a graphics card like that you need to get as much power out of your CPU as you possibly can to avoid bottlenecks. We've obviously got the 69 990 itself and you need to make sure you choose an appropriate chassis because right here you can see this is a 12 inch long graphics card there isn't a ton of space even in the 650D for extra room between the hard drive cages and the 6990 although the 650D can pull out this top hard drive cage to make more room for graphics cards if you require it. We've got 8 gigs of Corsair Dominator GT memory, a gigabyte P67 motherboard, we've got an AX850 80 plus gold power supply in here, and you're going to need, at, really I wouldn't recommend less than an 850 watt power supply for a single card, you want to run dual cards, we're talking 1000 to probably an AX 1200 watt power supply, so be aware, they consume power, they do make some noise, this isn't going to be a quiet system, but it is going to scream in terms of performance. We've also got a 128 gig SSD as the boot drive, a 2 terabyte hard drive for storage, and a Blu-ray rewriter here in the front so that you can watch Blu-ray on, well, okay, I don't know. You know what guys, leave a comment under the video. Do this right now. Leave a comment under the video and tell me what you think watching Blu-ray would be like on a display setup like that. Just to give you guys another look at the capabilities of this setup, I want to show you the settings we're using in Lost Planet 2. So bear in mind, because of the bezel correction, we're actually running at 5928 by 1920. So that's what gives us, uh, like for example, if a plane is flying this way, instead of it being flying like this and then like this, that's what makes it look more uniform because there's actually pixels being drawn behind the bezels essentially, okay? So it's a weird resolution. Uh, we're not using anti-aliasing. This is an extremely high resolution, so that's not really an option here. But our shadow deal details are high. Our texture details are high. Rendering level is high. DirectX 11 features are high. So we are running Lost Planet 2 at all at high settings and here is the result. Pretty sweet! I'm just going to move so that you guys can see what's going on over here. So we're going to just kind of run a couple games and uh, that's pretty much the point of what we're doing today. For this particular card, I thought this iFinity 5-way feature was cooler than anything else I could pretty much tell you about it. So. That's what we're going to be focusing on in Tech Tips. I might even just stand here and be quiet for a minute while you guys can appreciate the uh, sweetness of this, uh, this particular setup here. Actually, no, there's one thing I do want to say. We are using VA panels here. We are not using TN panels. TN panels do not have a viewing angle that is really suitable for use like this. So these are, these are BenQ BL2400 series monitors. And you'll notice that from your angle, you're actually looking at this one and the one on the far right over there from a very, very strange viewing angle. However, when you're sitting in front of it here, the uniformity of the color is actually excellent. So the way it is designed, the way I have it wrapping around the viewer is such that whether you're looking at the screen right in front of you, glancing to the right, or seeing this one out of your peripheral vision, all the colors are going to look very consistent. So with any graphics setup, in fact with almost anything these days, the question remains, but can it play Crisis? And the answer to that, as you can plainly see, at our ridiculous resolution, actually here I'm just going to show you guys the detail levels we're using right now, because no, it cannot quite run Crisis super smoothly at maximum details. Okay, so it's 59, 
something because I'm using bezel correction by 1920, so ludicrous resolution. I'm running almost everything pretty much on medium. And I am getting, oh, I don't even think you can see it, but up here in this top right corner, can you see the fraps thing? Okay, well, I'm getting 60 FPS solid. So I find that with all of these monitors, um, I get the, okay, I drop down to about 55 when I hit that barrel, 54. Yep, so I find when I have all of these monitors, I need a nice smooth frame rate in order to deliver a good gaming experience. Um, far more than I would normally need it if I was just using one monitor. So you gotta really have the graphics horsepower to back it up. But here we go, let's go for a ride. So yes, the answer is it can play Crisis. So I think I'll do just that for a little while here. Boom. Let's get out of there. Here we go. This is the same little sequence that I use for my image quality testing. So I'm pretty familiar with it. Got to get the frag grenades. Got to get the other gun that there's actually ammo for in this game. See, now I can get more ammo here. It is, without a doubt, a very, very cool gaming experience. Practical? Yeah, maybe not. But definitely different and definitely cool. Uh, everyone who's come into the Tech Tips room has just been blown away by how cool this is as a, as a gaming setup. Okay, let's see if we can blow up this truck here. Boom, there we go. All right, so thank you for checking out NCIX Tech Tips. Oh, I couldn't get it to hit me. And don't forget to subscribe for more reviews and technology explanations and all that good stuff.